Okay, today I'm going to take a look at um, doing an optimization problem. All right, I generally break um, my optimization problems down into six steps. All right, you're always going to want to read your story problem, draw yourself a picture, write down the given, and figure out what you are hunting for. Okay, um, then you're going to follow your six steps. These six steps will work for every optimization problem that you do. First step, you're going to take your given and solve it for y. Second step, you're going to then take that answer, plug it into your want. All right, you're going to manipulate that equation down so that you can eventually take a first derivative and find the critical points. All right, at that point, you've honestly found your answer, but then you have to actually verify to make sure that the answer um, is either a max or a min, whichever you're hunting for. So then you're going to verify your answer using, most of the time, using second derivative because that's usually going to be the easier process. All right, then you will find any remaining dimensions or information in the story problem that you might need, and then you can write a therefore statement that actually answers your question. Okay, so um, from there we're going to um, work out an example here. We'll zoom out and get to our first example. Alright, so our example here is um, pretty typical standard story problem for an optimization problem. Alright, let's say we've got a farmer and he uh, plans to fence in a rectangular pasture and it's adjacent to a river. Alright, the pasture must contain 180,000 meters squared in order to feed his entire herd. Alright, what dimensions will be required? Um, the least amount of fencing, okay? So it's an optimization where we are trying to minimize the amount of fencing, okay? So generally, I recommend drawing a picture to represent what's going on here. We obviously have got a river, and that's where our fence is going to be put up against it. All right, so they would draw, the, make the fence probably in a rectangular shape like that since it says rectangular pasture. I'm going to label my sides, all right? This would maybe say be X, and you could label these two sides Y, okay, because this is going to be our fencing that we need, okay. Um, the given, they gave us 180,000 meters squared. Well, meters squared tells you its area. They give us how much area is in this. So in my given, I was given area. So I can write an equation that represents that. The way I have defined my variables on my picture Link times width, x times y is going to be my area. So x times y is going to equal the amount of area that they gave me. So x times y equals 180,000. All right, now what I want, I want, it says least amount of fencing, so I want to minimize. And if it's the amount of fencing, so that would be around the outside edges, so I would be minimizing my perimeter. All right, now to come up with an equation there, I need to come back over here and look at what I've got. My perimeter would be two y's plus an x. Perimeters add up all the outside. So my perimeter is equal to x plus two y. All right, so there's all of your setup. Once you get all of your setup, then you are good to do your six steps. All right, step one um, on our list was to solve are given for y. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that given equation that I wrote and solve it for y. All right, so my uh, given equation that I wrote down was xy equals 180,000. All right, I'm going to solve for y, so I'm going to divide both sides by x. y equals 180,000 all over x. Okay, and then the second step was to plug this into the want. All right, so step two, I'm going to plug into my want. All right, my original want equation was the perimeter is equal to x plus 2y. So I'm going to take this y value and plug it in for y. Once I do that, it will be in terms of x. So then, instead of just having a regular equation here, I will actually have it in function notation. So I'm going to switch this to p of x equals x plus 2 times that 180,000 all over x. And you can see now I have a, it's all in terms of x, so that's why I went ahead and went to function notation. 
All right, now simplify this a little bit here. Maybe let's say p of x and then x plus by multiply, 2 times 180,000. I'll get 360,000 over x. All right, now keeping in mind my next step, I'm going to have to take the derivative. And looking at this right here, I do not want to take the derivative using quotient rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x and I'm going to move it up and make it a negative exponent. All right, so um, laws of exponents, you can legally do that. That's going to make taking the derivative a whole lot easier. So working, manipulating this equation, I'm going to have p of x is equal to x plus 360,000 x to the negative 1. All right, it's going to be a whole lot easier when I go to take my derivative. All right, step three is going to be to calculate our first derivative and find our critical points. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation um, and take the derivative of that. So p prime of x, all right, take the derivative of x, I'm going to get a 1. Take the derivative here, power rule, so I'll have a negative. 360,000 x to the negative 2. All right, so simple derivative. All right, now I've got to set this derivative equal to 0 to find my critical points. But I don't want to try to solve an equation that's got a negative exponent. All right, so again, I'm going to move that back down and make it a x squared, but I'm going to make it into the denominator. That way it will be easier to solve my equation. So that first derivative I'm going to rewrite as 1 minus the 360,000 all over x squared. All right, this equation setting this equal to zero will be much easier to solve. All right, so one minus 360,000 all over x squared, so it's equal to zero. Move this to the other side. One equals 360,000 all over x squared. Multiply both sides by x squared, x squared, equals 360,000. Square root of both sides, and I'm going to get x is plus or minus 600. All right, keeping in mind that we are working with dimensions, the negative value is not going to help us here, so my x is 600. Okay, now at that point, I'm pretty sure that that's probably going to be my answer, but you need to verify, all right? And because of what our first derivative is here, it's going to be easier to probably go ahead and use second derivative and do our second derivative test to verify that this really is a minimum, okay? So that's going to be my next step. Step four, I'm going to verify using my second derivative. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that first derivative down since it was on the other piece of paper. My first derivative was 1 minus 360,000 x to the negative 2. All right, so when I go to take my second derivative, all right, the 1's going to go away. Bring that down. Negative times negative is going to be a positive. 720,000 x to the negative 3. All right, and then to make my doing that second derivative test a little bit easier, I'm going to want that to be a positive exponent. So again, I'm going to move that back down. I'm going to write my second derivative as 720,000 over x to the third. I think that's just going to be easier when we test that value of 600 that we got. All right, so to um, do my second derivative test, I need to take my value, plug it in, my second derivative. So second derivative, I'm going to plug in 600 here. All right, and then I only need to know whether it's positive or negative. I don't need to know the exact value. I got a positive number on top. I plug 600 in here, cube it. It's going to be a positive number. I know this will be greater than zero. So second derivative, plugging 600 in shows that it is greater than zero. It's a positive value. So then therefore I can conclude that x equals 600 is a minimum, which is what I was wanting to prove for the answer to the story problem. All right, so that's kind of crucial right there that you are verifying that it's a minimum. All right, and then your last step, or fifth step, and really not the last step, but your fifth step would be find any other remaining dimensions or anything that the story problem is asking for. In this case, it was wanting both sets of dimensions. All right, so find some dimensions here. Um, that original equation for area that I wrote was x times y equals 180,000. 
I know x is 600, so I can plug that in. Divide both sides by 600, and I'm going to get a y dimension of 300. Okay, usually um, then you've got your dimensions. I usually make my students write a therefore statement. All right, just to answer the question, I usually have them say something along the lines of therefore, um, a 300 meter by a 600 meter um, pasture will require the least amount of fencing. It's just a nice little therefore statement. Concludes the story problem. You've answered the question exactly with what it wanted, and everything is good. All right, so um, those six steps basically will work for every optimization problem. All right, and if you organize your work and you label what you're doing throughout, then it just makes the process a whole lot simpler. All right, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like, and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.